O'Connor with Other World Computing, OWC, here today to talk about some of our new products and do kind of a, a deep dive, or at least, a, uh, at least some kind of dive into the new Thunderbolt 4 technology. I'd like to start uh, with our Thunderbolt 3 LTO. Now, the OWC uh, Mercury LTO is now you know, the highest performance, highest capacity LTO drive on the market that takes advantage of the easy plug and play Thunderbolt Type C interface. You know, up to 12 terabytes uncom uncompressed, up to 30 terabytes compressed, and with blazing speeds of close to 400 megabytes a second, you now have your archive partner, your data transfer partner, your means to ship you know, that, you know, those dailies, you know, those, those finished uh, reels, whatever it may be, on a compact tape that's very uh, durable, has longevity on the shelf, and is a lot less expensive than buying additional hard drives. So the Flex 8, or one of our Thunder Bay 8s, or one of any number of our different Thunderbolt solutions. You know, it's there for your post-edit and all your ingests and all the ongoing production needs. And then when it's time to ship it off, and you know, for those that don't want to ship a drive around, our LTO is, is an exceptional solution, you know, both for, again, you know, where that data goes, how you ship that data, or just for archiving it so you can bring it back for later use. You know, LTO has come a long ways over the years, and we're really, really glad, really, you know, proud, quite frankly, to, to complete another piece of that workflow and have LTO in the chain as an available option. After uh, the Thunderbolt LTO, we've also got our Envoy Pro Express. Now, this gives you the flexibility, you know, if you need it, to use different NVMe drives you know, on the fly in the very first bus powered portable uh, Thunderbolt solution that lets you use your own drive and swap drives at, at will. Now, this is a great addition to our, our entire Envoy family, which includes IP67 rated Thunderbolt 3 storage, provides up to 2,000 megabytes of storage, of, I'm sorry, of performance, as well as our, our upcoming uh, Envoy Pro FX, which is gonna give you the first universal data transport, data ingest, you know, data device period that will work at full speed on your Thunderbolt 3, actually your Thunderbolt equipped computers, I, and that includes Thunderbolt 4 now, and also will work on any Mac or PC with USB 3. So this is a device that will give you maximum solid state NVMe performance, whether you have a machine from a decade ago, or you've got the latest Tiger Lake or Mac solution today that will do 2,800 megabytes a second through a Type-C port. So from USB Type-A to the latest you know, current generation Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 machines, this gives you maximum performance for getting that data moved to where it needs to move. You know, do high-speed ingest, even do editing on this drive on a computer that's got the full capability, but easy data transfer and easy interoperability you know, with any system that may still be used in, in, in workflows that are exceptionally viable and, and still very important today. Now, what I really want to talk about is Thunderbolt 4. It's something that's you know, kind of you know, created some confusion out there. And the confusion, you know, it comes along the lines of when we went from Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3, that was a brand new connector. We went from 20 gigabits to 40 gigabits of performance. New video capabilities were added with Thunderbolt 3. And well, the same might be expected of Thunderbolt 4. Thunderbolt 4, more than anything else, well, on the peripheral side, it makes Thunderbolt 3 better. It really technically is Thunderbolt 3 but the choice has been made to flag it as Thunderbolt 4 and to give it the namesake Thunderbolt 4 for some of the new features that it offers on the peripheral side. The main peripheral benefit of the new Thunderbolt 4 chipset, for, which is Gosson Ridge, is the ability to do hubbing. And OWC introduced the very first in the world Thunderbolt 4 hub just a few days ago. And this product for the very first time and you know, drum roll, because you've been asking for it forever. There's been all these products that you know, kind of look like they might have done it, but it just wasn't supported. It's something we couldn't do. This actually does give you more Thunderbolt Type-C ports from a single port. So from one port off your computer, you now get four ports that you can plug devices directly into with full Thunderbolt capability. That includes using displays. That includes using storage. That includes or see anything in the Thunderbolt ecosystem. So, and, oh, and, and better yet, you know, that includes bus power devices because just like your system ports or any port in your Thunderbolt chain today, 15 watts of power is supplied from each of those ports. You're no longer limited to 
having just the number of bus power devices on a computer as the number of ports it has. Now, this allows you, you know, pretty much as many bus power Thunderbolt devices as you could reasonably want. Going to the computer side, you know, app, uh, Intel rather released their Tiger Lake platform, which is standard integrated with Thunderbolt 4. What Thunderbolt 4 does on the host side, and in this case with Tiger Lake PCs, is guarantee you you're going to have all the features that Thunderbolt 3 has always promised were available. And when I by, by what say what I mean by that with Thunderbolt 3, and certainly on the PC, you had uh, as a PC maker, you know there were different options you had in terms of just what kind of implementation you were going to do, what was going to be supported, what video was going to be supported, how power delivery was or was not going to be supported, whether it was going to be 20 gigabits or the full 40 gigabits that Thunderbolt 3 provides. This existed in the PC space, even to the degree there are machines that are Thunderbolt enabled, but you have to buy a secondary card to actually engage and utilize Thunderbolt 3. It's on the chipset level, but there's still some missing pieces that you can buy a card to add it, but you're not really adding it in that case, you're enabling it. You can't add Thunderbolt to any machine that doesn't already have a chipset supporting Thunderbolt. You know, that's been a question that, that still goes on today. On the Mac side, and this is really, really important, Thunderbolt 4 doesn't give us anything that we don't already have of significance, actually really nothing at all. You know, the only uh, question mark might be USB 4 which, by the way, there are no USB 4 devices today. When you're, a Mac, when you're operating on a Mac, Apple implemented every feature that Thunderbolt 3 provided you know, as soon as it could be provided. You already have, I mean, check the boxes for 40 gigabits. We have you know, dual 4K and up to 8K video support. Every Mac has power delivery fully enabled for the capability that's necessary, whether it's a desktop or a laptop. These boxes are already checked if you're a Mac user. On the PC side, you know, the experience could really vary machine to machine, or if you had a, a multi-platform uh, workflow, you, know, you might take a Thunderbolt device off your Mac, plug it into a PC, and it either performs slower. If it's a video device, you might not be able to actually display the video that you expect. You know, there's all sorts of caveats with Thunderbolt 3 on previous PCs that Thunderbolt 4 in the PC world will eliminate. When you have a Thunderbolt 4 PC, you've got everything that Thunderbolt 3 has always promised you know, could be delivered. Now it's just standard, it's required. It, it, it levels the playing field. Actually, it doesn't so much even level the playing field. It simplifies things to where you don't have to think, or actually you don't have, you don't have to worry about digging into the fine print to make sure your Thunderbolt equipped PC actually has all the Thunderbolt features that you expect it to have. For us in the, uh, for, for, I should rather say, for everyone that's in the Apple Mac world, we've already got these features. We've already got everything implemented with Thunderbolt 3. You know, Thunderbolt 4 is, you know, again, is, is a standard now on the PC side that this says, you, you, well, put it succinctly, you're going to get everything that Mac people have always known they have, you know, without having to look. So definitely wanted to clarify that. Does Thunderbolt 4 make Thunderbolt 3 obsolete? Not at all. It's really the same technology you know, with a new branding. It's still 40 gigabits. It's still up to two 4K displays. It's still, you know, it supports one 8K over DP 1.4. You know, this is already present in our Thunderbolt uh, 3 systems. So it's going to be a little confusing, I, I can imagine, because we're going to, I mean, we've already had people come to us and say, geez, you know, I really like that product, but why didn't you make it Thunderbolt 4? Well, in addition to it not working with you know, systems that are shipping today, or, or shipping certainly in, you know, before Thunderbolt 4 you know, came out as a standard, we couldn't build a lot of these solutions with a Thunderbolt, with a Gossamer Race chipset. You know, remember, that chipset is, you can call it Thunderbolt 4, but it's effectively, it's, it's Thunderbolt 3 technology, which is you know, continuing to mature and have more features added to it. The Gossamer Race chipset you know, adds on to existing capabilities with hubbing technology. Would we want to use it today for storage? No, because it actually uh, doesn't allow for the same capabilities that the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 chipsets 
you know, currently provide. It's not designed for storage solutions. It's designed for hubbing, and that particular chipset. It's not about it being Thunderbolt 4. It's a, it's a chipset that's been designed to give us a certain capability, a certain set of you know, uh, features that we can implement and add into any Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 chain. Now, I, so when I say that, I do need the caveat. It will be up to the manufacturers how and when they support the new Gossamer Ridge chipset or call it Thunderbolt 4, but again, that's gonna be kind of a, you can sort of use them interchangeably, but they're not exactly interchangeable. You know, this is really just like when any new chipset comes out, there's updates that are required in, in software, sometimes in hardware, but this is, this is really a software update to support the new technologies, the new chipset that has now been introduced. Now, I do fully expect to see full support for this in the, in the near future, perhaps by the time this is being viewed you know, on the Apple uh, side of the fence. And PC makers with Thunderbolt 3, they've provided Thunderbolt 3 ports you know, there is absolutely the possibility and capability for those different OEMs to update and support you know, different computers for these new, for this new chipset. And when that happens or how that happens, that of course I have to defer to those PC OEMs for that information. But I do want to make it clear that your Thunderbolt 3 hardware is not obsolete. There is no reason in the world to go out and buy Thunderbolt 4 stuff to replace perfectly good working Thunderbolt 3 equipment. Certainly, when you can benefit from having a Thunderbolt 4 hub, we hope you buy our hub. I mean, that's that's something again. That, that's we've been waiting for that forever. We even tried. We came up with all sorts of ways to that we thought we were going to make it possible a few years ago, and unfortunately, this is the first time that there is a solution that Intel and, and Apple are behind that we can actually bring to market, and we're glad to be the first company to do so. Now, one other great benefit of Thunderbolt 4 that's going to make people extremely happy has to do with the cabling. USB-C and Thunderbolt cabling has really created a lot of problems for, for different folks. The cables look the same, they have the same connector ends. You, know, you can look and see that little Thunderbolt, uh, you know, the little lightning bolt on the Thunderbolt cable. They know it's a Thunderbolt cable, but if it's a Thunderbolt 3 active cable, it doesn't work with USB. Well, it'll give you USB 2 if you use it with a USB device. If you take a USB-C cable and connect it to a Thunderbolt device, it doesn't work at all. If you take a USB-C cable that's not a full 10G cable and use it with another USB-C device that's 10G enabled or needs at least 5G, you get well very mixed and, and difficult to troubleshoot you know, issues that occur because it's not the right cable for that, for that product. We feel, you know, in the beginning, this wasn't so much an issue, but as people have more of these devices and forget which cable was connected to what, you know, it's amazing how many tech calls we feel because it's not the device and it's partially working, it's because they've got the wrong cable. Or worse, they're saying they're using it with two devices. It works great on this device, but then it's only giving me a partial functionality over here. I just don't know why this isn't working. And then you know, the question that get asked is going through everything, says, you know, the cable, you're using the same cable, right? Well, no, I, the, the dot powers, I, I just borrowed my cable that came with my Apple, with my Apple power supply. Oh, well, that explains everything because that, that cable is is limited bandwidth and wasn't, the, that, that's not, well, simply put, that's not the right cable. Swap the cable, you know, the, the problems we've been troubleshooting for the last day or two are now solved. So our folks usually open with what cable are you using? And sometimes it's, it's almost something, I mean, I think it's, it's becoming less now as more people are experiencing this and talking about it. But in the beginning, it was an argument because I got the right cable. I'm sure I have the right cable. I don't need to look at my cable. I mean, it's got the right ends on it. It must work. So I spent a lot of time talking about the current Thunderbolt 4 cables, which are universal for everything Type-C, you know, will completely eliminate that. No matter what Thunderbolt 4 cable you use, Thunderbolt 4 will work with your Type-C devices. You can run it from your power supply to your PC to, for, for USB-C powered laptops. You can use it with Thunderbolt 3 devices, because again, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, same thing. And of course you can use it with Thunderbolt 4. If it fits, it works. Even going from a, a Type-C display to a computer, it's Thunderbolt port. That is you know, probably one of the, the best things to come out of you know, this step forward. And that's probably a good reason to call it Thunderbolt 4 just to have that differentiation when you look at the cable 
knowing that this is, when it says it's a Thunderbolt 4 cable, it's a universal cable. And I actually had a, a conversation with some folks yesterday and, and their, their feedback was, you know, when those cables are available, which is, should be by end of uh, 2020 for the up to one meter, and in the 2021, we'll see one, two meter and potentially longer cables. They said, we're gonna cut our current cables, just cut them in half and buy Thunderbolt 4 cables just for the time it's gonna save us and you know, the headaches we've been having, you know, grabbing the wrong cable when we're in a pinch. So that's a few of the things that, you know, we've got on the, on the horizon, got, have coming out. There's tons more always that you can find at uh, OWC.com and MaxSales.com, but really want to spend some time on Thunderbolt and, you know, make it really clear there's, you, the, the Thunderbolt ecosystem is such that whether it's Thunderbolt 3, that you're probably going to see more and more of these things just called Thunderbolt without that designation. But whether Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, you know, how these units are built, they're being built the best way with the best chipset available to give you the capabilities and the best performance that's possible. And we have a whole slate of Thunderbolt 4 solutions coming out, primarily docks and hubs as we go forward. That's what the, uh, that is what the current chipset that, that has been touted as Thunderbolt 4 has been built for. And at the same time, we've got a great slate of, well, Thunderbolt 3 solutions you know, still coming down and we will continue to develop Thunderbolt 3 because again, these work together. They're not one replacing the other, or one being better than the other. They're simply different technologies and capabilities that have been added to the, uh, well, added to the, uh, the tackle box so that we can give you more of all the, the great solutions that you need. So I'm Larry O'Connor with MaxSales.com and OWC and I, I hope uh, this helps you out.